I agree with you. This is not something for the future. This is something for today and from now on. However, there's another aspect to that discussion, which is the dystopian science future, I think, has heavily influenced the public perception and often the debate, particularly in the popular media, about machine learning and artificial intelligence. And uh, one of the many confusions is the distinction between a general AI, you know, this, this machine that could take over the world and decide we're all redundant, should be eliminated, and the very specific, focused machine learning techniques of the type that Peter outlined, which you can use to do things like improve medical diagnostics and indeed outcomes in many areas of life. And I think the important thing for us to focus on today is not the big generalized AI stuff, but the very specific machine learning applications, which is what has arrived already today. Um, so bearing that in mind and thinking about stuff you've read in the press about this, my sense is that many people start from the, start, uh, the assumption that uh, machines are going to be um, malign, they're going to be driven by inscrutable algorithms, and that's extremely scary. They're going to be um, uh, ultimately obsessed, as I said earlier, with subjugating and maybe even eliminating the human race. Um, and some of that thinking, I think, you can find buried in uh, Article 15 of the Data Protection Directive and Article 22 of the GDPR, because there is an implicit assumption that humans will be better, always be better, than machines. Um, at making decisions that are compliant with the data protection uh, principles that we've just been reminded of. And so I suppose that instead of them being these nasty machines, we are assuming that humans um, will be benign and transparent and fair and um, reasonable and sensible and safe and scrutable. In other words, they will be able to explain their decisions in a rational way. Uh, I think we may have perhaps overrated the human race. Uh, when it comes to decision making. And you don't have to look far to find um, uh, evidence of that. There are plenty of studies, and uh, some of them are mentioned in the, uh, in, in the paper that uh, Peter kind of referred to, machine learning with personal data. One of my favorites is a, uh, a study of parole decisions made by Israeli parole board judges when having control for all of the available variables, such as, you know, what was the crime, what was the sentence, how did the guy behave in jail, etc., etc. The only significant factor in determining whether someone was released on parole or not was how long it was since the judges had something to eat. Now, extraordinary. Uh, they probably didn't know that. Uh, and if you'd asked them to provide you with, quote, meaningful information about the logic involved in their decision on parole, that's the test in the GDPR, they couldn't have told you because it didn't occur to them they were having, you know, a hanger attack. Uh, they were really annoyed with having to see yet another case because they wanted to go and have lunch. So that's an example of human decision making and why we shouldn't assume that humans, having a human in the loop will always be better. The other example that's widely discussed in the press, and indeed I'm astonished at how many people with no background in philosophy or law want to talk to me about the trolley problem these days. Um, the other problem involves killer robots and very specifically um, machines that incidentally kill such as autonomous vehicles. Now I have no doubt, and you've all, all I'm sure seen the, the, the Tesla incident reported, but that's just the beginning. Of course, autonomous vehicles will be involved in fatal road accidents. But if you say, uh, and can we understand why they did it? Well, maybe we won't always be able to explain perfectly why they did it. Does that mean we should ban them? Be careful what you wish for. If you look at the World Health Organization statistics, at the moment, roughly on average per year, humans, <coughs> sorry, 1.4 million people die and uh, 30 to 50 million people are seriously injured, depending on how you define it, in road accidents. And an estimated 90% of those accidents are caused by human error. Now, I call it error, but as you know, error includes things like um, eating a hamburger, having an argument with somebody on the phone, uh, texting, tweeting, um, reading your Facebook feed, watching a movie, falling asleep, being drunk. I mean, you can call those all error if you like. Now, most of those things are not things that machines will be susceptible to. So if it is true, in fact, that 90% of deaths and serious injuries on the roads are caused by human error, and that machines could eliminate, let's say, even half of those, so we might reduce almost by half the total number of deaths and personal injuries, just because we can't, in every case, reverse engineer the decision-making process because it has a so-called black box element, does that mean we should ban those kind of technologies? This is at the heart of our discussion this week on tensions between privacy and innovation.